Hi guys and welcome to Scuba Tube, the entertainment and news show where I'm going to be talking with Justin from Hewish Outdoors, or you'll better know him as Justin from Atomic. Uh, but first off, let's take a look at the news. In recent news, a scuba diver in Florida was sucked into a nuclear power plant intake pipe. Despite mooring up against a buoy, which the power plant states has a warning to keep away, and bypassing security features around the entrance to the pipe, he was sucked in for a five minute long tumble in pitch black, but he um, returned to the other end completely unscathed. He ended up in a reservoir pool where um, plant, power plant workers lifted him out of the water and made sure that he was okay. In other news, Ray D'Italia broke the Guinness World Record for the longest underwater human chain, with 173 divers holding hands all at the same time, beating the, uh, the previous record which is 110 divers but they might struggle to beat the, um, the surface record, which is currently set at 5 million people um, in Bangladesh. Divers from the Russian Geographical Society completed a 102 meter ice dive in minus 1.5 degrees Celsius water to collect samples. One of the divers stated that um, his dry gloves down at 100 meters were compressed so much that he could barely use his hands, but they've broken the, uh, the world record for the deepest ice dive. Royal Navy divers have discovered a German-made torpedo during a routine seabed survey in Scapa Flow. The, uh, the torpedo was thought to have been fired back at in 1939 at HMS Royal Oak. It's thought to have missed and um, continued on, and where it lies now is where it, uh, it ran out of fuel. <coughs> fired by a German U-boat, the uh, Royal Navy are looking to, um, uh, to raise it safely, and um, right now there's an exclusion zone, so you can't dive there. Earlier on, I had a chat with Justin from Hewish Outdoors. Let's have a look at that interview. Okay, so today I'm joined with Justin from Hewish Outdoors. Hi, Justin. Hello, Mark. You're right. Yeah, very well, thank you. Uh, so, quickly, sort of describe sort of what you do for Hewish Outdoors and what Hewish Outdoors. Is. My my position within Hewish Outdoors is I, I manage UK Island and Channel Island territories for them. Um, under Hewish, in our portfolio of products, we have the premium brands which uh, are Atomic. Um, Stoussac, uh, Bear, uh, Wetsuits and Dry Suits, and Ziegel BCDs. Um, within Europe, we also distribute Liquid Vision and Shark Skin, and within the US, we also distribute Sunto dive computers. Cool. So, very sort of high end, sort of quality dive Premium equipment. products, yeah. <coughs> Okay, uh, so you brought some products with you today that we're going to focus on, just the, um, sort of the interesting features that most people wouldn't really notice from, yep. from a glance. Uh, so we've got a couple of masks here, we've got the Venom Frameless and the Venom Arc. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at the Venom Frameless first, so what's new and interesting about this mask? Okay, the, um, the first thing we do with uh, atomic masks is we use a super white uh, ultra clear shot lens, which basically gives you a 100% optical grade glass, which means you have no floatum in it, which cool. creates a green tint in the lens. Yep. So if you're diving in green water or darker water, the lens is actually clear. This also helps with white balance on the cameras and, and getting the, the colour coloration correctly. So we have two models with the Venom, as you so rightly said. This is a Venom Frameless. This is actually up for an innovation award in terms of uh, mask design and uh, the silicon that we use. Um, it's a frameless design, so the mask uh, skirt is over molded on, onto the glass rather than having a hard frame. So this makes it lighter and fold it completely flat. The second thing we have is this new jelly silicon technology that we use. Um, basically it's super stretchy, it's extremely comfortable and it's a tensure strength. So you can actually squeeze it if you like. Have you felt that? Yeah, no, that's cool. Really soft, yeah. One of the nice features about this is um, the comfort that the mask gives you and obviously the uh, technicalities of the silicon is super comfortable and super stretchy. Over a long duration dive, one of the nicest things is under the nose here, it doesn't actually hurt. It doesn't yeah. pull up after you've had a two hour, three hour duration dive. So a lot of the tech community are going across to this mask because of that comfort factor. The other feature is we have it in black for the technical divers of course. Yeah. So we have it in a, a matte black here and a gloss and matte black where the red is, yeah. We also have a nice feature on the buckles. I don't yep. know if you've seen this, it's a one touch feature. So when you have it on, on your head, you can just pull it like so. And then when you want to adjust it, just 
press the button. Nice, simple and easy. Yeah. Pretty straightforward on that one. And also this seal, because I used this before, and it's um, even if you've got sort of facial hair, it yeah. still seals against uh, your it, face much better than uh, sort of traditional silicon. It certainly seems to seal a lot, uh, a lot more faces, and it's a lot more comfortable, certainly on long, long duration dives for sure. Cool, cool. Uh, well, good luck with that nomination. Thank um, you. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Uh, we've also got the Venom Arc. So the Venom Arc is very similar, but it's got a few different um, sort of upgrades. Correct, almost. yeah. So the, um, the Venom Arc is what we call a subframe design. So when you feel the mask, it's got a hard frame, if you like, with the overmold of the silicon. We use the same glass technology, um, but this also comes in three colours. So we have the grey ascent here, then we have it with red ascent here, and in blue. And in the arc coated lens, we have it in the grey and black only. I don't know if you can see that tint on the lens. It's like a pink, pink tint. And this is the anti-reflective coating. This yep. does a number of things. Um, I don't know whether you've seen driving along on, on sort of upmarket cars where they have a pink tinted windscreen and it heightens the colours at low light. Yep. Um, it gives better protection against headlights and so on. And basically this is doing the same. So whilst you're diving, it's going to heighten the colours and it will also uh, help with anti-reflective uh, coating with the lenses. So if you're decompressing at three metres and the sun's coming through in the Red Sea, maybe not in the UK, <laughs> but, but see, it, will, it will actually help in, in protecting that yeah, as well. Anti-glare. Yeah, an anti-glare cool. property. But the main feature of that is it heightens colours. So yellows, reds, uh, blues, the colours uh, disappear quite quickly through the, through the, through the depth range. Mm. This will heighten those colours. Uh, so Atomic also make uh, a lot of high-end regulators. Yes, we uh, do. And you've got a couple of them with you? Yep, yep. We've brought along today the, the T3, yep. which is the titanium model, oh, which is nice. the lightest metal first stage regulator in, in the world. Yep. So this is completely titanium, this cool. first stage. <laughs> this uh, particular model is our, our flagship model. Mm -hmm. um, it's made fully of titanium in the first stage, yep. um, bar the piston, which is a mono piston because obviously at high percentage of oxygen, you can't really use titanium yeah, at 100%. <laughs> um, and in the second stage is the T3, which we have a number of pattern features. Um, in the first stage, we have what's called a jet seat piston, which as I said is made of mono. This is a, different to any other piston design first stage on the market. It's actually a blunt piston that's flanged at the end. So it seats into a very, very hard, high pressure seat. You can't even cut your nail into it, it's that hard. Cool. But it relies on the, the flange of the piston seating in, in the high pressure seat, yeah. rather than a conventional design, which is uh, a sharp piston, yeah. which cuts into a soft seat. Yeah. Therefore, it needs to be changed a lot more okay. regularly. That's clever. Yeah. You've also got, if you sort of squeeze that section underneath that, you've got this sort of white gel underneath that. That's correct. That's the crystal lube. So crystal lube is an, an O2 compatible grease and uh, all our regulators are 40% from, from the box. So we use O2 compatible grease. This is what we call the ambient chamber. Yep. So in here, um, on a non-environmentally sealed regulator, you would have holes. Yep. It would allow the water to get in to mm. give it its balancing properties. So if you're at 30 metres, it has a 30 metre water pressure, sure. 10 meters and balance it out. With this, what we do to environmentally seal it, uh, we pack it with silicon and we put this rubber seal around the side of it. It's actually a silicon seal. Sure. And that will transfer the pressure, yeah. the ambient pressure around you, so whatever depth to you balance have. it. Yeah. What you'll see is it's slightly concaved now. Yes. And when you put it onto the cylinder, you prime it, that will become completely flat because okay. it's pressurized. That's yeah. clever. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then you've got some funky features inside the second stage. Yeah, well. the second stage is, is <laughs> the ultimate in, in, in terms of um, performance. Um, your first stage is, if you like, the engine, but your second stage is what's going to give you a performance and your cracking effort and so on. So with the atomic regulators, we do a number of, uh, number of, of things that we have patented. Um, the first thing we have patented is we use all titanium lever spring and poppet system in here. Now we use titanium for a number of reasons. It doesn't rust, doesn't perish, doesn't yep. deform in any way. Um, the second reason we use for the spring titanium is it doesn't lose any tensile strength. 
So over its entire lifetime, you don't need to change that spring yeah. out. So if you, for instance, if you're a holiday diver and you store your equipment in the, in the bedroom or the shed for six months or eight months of the year, then bring it out. The spring isn't under tension, so it will work perfectly. There are a number of regulators out there. If you did that, the spring is under spring tension all the time and it will lose its tensile strength. And that's when you get the issue, you put it on a cylinder and it goes tss. Yeah, which is known. So we use titanium. Uh, yes, it's a lot more expensive to use than a normal spring, but uh, it, it gives us that, that property that we want, uh, the quality. We have a couple of other features as well. Um, we have a seat saving device, which is basically a wave washer. So it's a bent washer that when it's not under pressure, it lifts the orifice off the low pressure seat, so you don't have any artificial engraving yep. of the seat. So that means you only use the seat, start using the seat when it's under pressure. When it's pressurized. Yeah. So again, if it's sitting in a box somewhere on a shelf, it's still being engraved. Clever. So we have that technology. And that, uh, you can have physically hear that technology when you prime the regulator on a cylinder, you hear a click. Right. And that's basically the seat hitting the, the low, pressure, low pressure seat. Clever. But there's one more feature which is quite important, which is the AFC here. Now on a normal regulator, you would have a paddle, yes. okay? Um, you don't know where to put that paddle at 10 meters or 30 <laughs> meters, do you? Yeah. you know, most divers just put it on minimum on the surface and maximum underwater. Yep. Um, this is patented again to us and what this does here, we have the same paddle internally, but it's run on Boyle's law. Yep. So it moves in or out the correct position according to the water pressure. So it gives you that perfect breeze. Yep. All automatically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you don't have to think about where, where you're set. Yeah, keep adjusting it. Yeah. It. But a lot of these features, they cross over to you, uh, the rest of the range of your regulators. That's, that's correct. You, you, that's very well said, actually. The atomic regulators have a one design theory. Yep. Um, so when you look at an atomic regulator, the first stage is the same, the second stage is the same. Um, we differentiate our models from using titanium for lightweightness. Yep. Then we do the ST1, which is the same design, but with stainless steel as the first stage. We're sure. again the only manufacturer using stainless steel for that. This, in fact, has the highest cold water rating stainless steel as a, a cold water rated regulator. Um, then chrome brass, it conducts the heat and cold a lot better. Um, then we have the M1, which again is the same design, but it uses a mono, and this is 100% uh, from the box. One of the only brands that are, are, are stating this. Yeah. Um, then we can uh, look at something like the little Z3. So the T3 here has a three year service interval and there's a retail price of just over £1,100. Sure. Then we have the Z3, which is this unit here. Um, has the same features in terms of the jet seat piston, yep. the titanium lever spring and poppet, the AFC, but this is a 395 retail. Okay. So this allows the customer to get into an atomic product at a, at a, at a decent price Much point. Okay. Yeah. And again, the service intervals are two years on, on the atomic regulators and three years on the C3. And you're still getting the sort of five port. Um. What we, yeah, what we have here, um, you see, this is a swivel port. Yep. So this swivels 360 degrees. Okay. To reduce the price slightly, we've removed the swivel. Okay. Which a lot of people feel is a failure point. Um, we Extra have a, o -ring. Yeah. a backup O ring and a debris O ring in here. So that, again, that's patented to us. So we, we don't have any failures on our <laughs> on our swivel. But we use a fixed port. So this actually gives you seven low wow. pressure ports in a fixed position. Cool. Um, and it's slightly shorter. Yes. So from a side mount point of view or tech mount point of view, a bit more people, compact. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It makes a little bit more sense. But technically wise, these regulators' internals are, are the same. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and you also do computers? Uh, we you, do, yes. You do the Cobalt 2 computer. We, need to we have, yeah. Yeah, this is the, um, this is the Atomic Cobalt. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most intuitive console mounted computers on, on the market. Very easy to interrogate. Um, it uh, has a full colour screen mm -hmm. and a push button technology. 
So here is your main menu and uh, you scroll up or down to get into your menu or enter or back. Um, so for instance, if we press now enter yep. uh, on the ready to dive, we have the dive screen there, yep. which uh, hopefully you guys can see, it's actually in feet. Um, so I'm just going to show you how easy it is to change the, from feet to meters and, and put in a, a, a nitrox mix. So if we want to change this to feet and meters, we can go back, go down to settings, enter, and then we go into uh, preferences. And at the moment you can see a, a, an open menu here saying feet, so we want to change this and we go down to meters and we want to change the PSI, so we want to go up to bar uh, with cubic feet. We want to go to litres and Fahrenheit, we want to change that to Celsius. We'll leave it in English and a data storage every 30 seconds. So if I go back and back again, you can now see we're in metres and bar. Clever. Very, very, very simple, very <laughs> simple. One of the hardest things to do on dive computers is probably put a nitrox mix in. Yep. Some computers you have to hold them for three seconds, then press a third button and, and then go scroll. Yeah. It's <laughs> not very intuitive. And, and if you guys run a smartphone, this is so simple to do. Yeah. So again, we go back and we go into settings. And then we go down to, uh, let's just check the gas, the uh, screen brightness, see if we can get it a bit brighter for you guys. Uh, you might be able to see. Here we go back, we go down to gas and tank settings. Okay. And um, the cobalt will take up to six mixes, okay? Um, you can add a main mix and then five other, five, five other mixes. Yep. Um, so you have air on this one, which is fine, but we're going to change it to a 36 mix. We press enter, yep. and then we go to th three, and then we increase that to six. <laughs> a 1.4 is fine. Yep. Tank size, we're going to go away from cubic feet and PSI, so we're going to put it in litres. And then we're going to have a, a 12 litre, so one, two, and that's it. So we can see here you've got the first mix is EAN36 in a 12 litre. Yep. We can go back, we can go back, ready to dive, press enter, and there you see our mix. Very clever, very easy. It's all sort of colour coded as well. Yes, very easy, yeah. very easy to use. Nice crisp um, sort of screen just to see a display on it. Yeah, for sure. Overall, the, you have all full-blown dive computer features that you'd expect in terms of settings, planning, dive logs, night trucks, um, pre-dive checks and so on. Um, we also have one of the fastest compasses on the market. So if you're in dive mode and you want to get into the compass, we yep. press enter. It's probably not going to work so well with the There's metal in the roof, <laughs> but it's extremely quick. Yeah. Extremely quick. And if you want to set a reciprocal, reciprocal bearing, you can do 180, 120, 90, <laughs> press 180, turn it 180 degrees, and a red arrow will come back, hopefully take you back to your original well, destination, you <laughs> <laughs> if you've done a good navigation course. <laughs> the other nice feature with the Atomic um, is that it comes as standard with a carbon Kevlar hose. Yep. And a bayonet fitting, which I think, are you able to demonstrate that yep. one? Grab. And we also have the charger, the charging adapter, and the USB. Um, the computer is fully updatable via the internet, so if there's any new updates for it, that's all free of charge. And also the dive log is downloadable free of charge from the internet. Screen guards come in with the package, and uh, the retail on that is, is just over £850. And so the rechargeable battery, so yes. yeah, computer for life. It's a lithium ion rechargeable battery. Um, you will get about 40 to 60 hours on, on one charge, depending on how bright you have the screen. Yes. Um, the lithium ion battery has a 10,000 recharge cycle. So you're looking at a minimum of 40,000 diving hours before you need to change a battery. So not only do you save in uh, battery change costs yeah. and investing in this, this cobalt, you never need to worry about it flooding or having the accidental flood from changing yeah, battery. You're not changing O-rings or anything? No, correct. It's a very, very nice dive equipment. Mm. Um, very sort of high-end, fully features. Yeah. Uh, everything that you need in your diving career.
One of the things I'd, I'd like to mention is that um, it's, it's, it's nice having it on the wrist, um, but when you have a dry suit and wet suits, it can be quite cumbersome. You've got a lot. <laughs> yeah, with, with the cobalt, what, uh, what we tend to find, one of the better ways of, of doing it, it's all about how you configure your kit, as a lot of the divers are now doing, they're streamlining their kit, making sure it works correctly, not just slapping it on together. And uh, I run it down from the first stage and I clip it up onto my BC. Yep. Uh, we have a little D-ring clip here. And what can happen, you have a little snap hook and that sits there and it's like a head up display. Yeah. And the beauty is you actually don't need to do this if you're doing any real work. You don't need to keep stopping and checking at the right depth. It's, it's, it's well, there yeah. in front of your face. <laughs> it's very clever. Um, but yes, it's, um, it is, it is uh, not as popular as wrist top computers. But Has it sure. really hit the sort of UK market? No, you know, I think uh, console uh, computers are not as popular for sure as, as wrist top computers. Very popular in America and uh, in sort of parts of Europe though. So Absolutely. Yeah, they are good dive computers. It's just, we just, um, <laughs> uh, we just don't have them um, sort of that many in this country yet. Yeah, for sure. Cool. So yeah, so thank you very much for, um, for coming. No problem. Very interesting to look at the, um, the sort of the finer features and the interesting little bits that most people don't, uh, don't tend to see. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much, Justin. Great, Mark. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Nice much. to see you. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for Justin for joining me earlier. Just so that you know, that clip was actually filmed just before the Diver Awards were actually announced. But I'm pleased to say that Atomic did win the most innovative product award for their Atomic Frameless Mask. So congratulations to them. All of those products are available on the Simply Scuba website. If you've got any questions or comments about any of them, just pop them in the comment section below. In this part of the show, we like to have a look at some of your underwater clips and videos. If you've got any underwater clips that you want to send us or any pictures, put them on our Facebook feed or our Twitter feed with the hashtag ScubaTube. But for this month, here are some of our favourites. Thanks for watching, safe diving. If you like that video, give us a thumbs up, click on the subscribe button and check out some of our other videos.